Joining me now, I have Matt Johnson and Matt Miller, who are both the creators of a new film called Operation Avalanche, which is, well, it is a film about a fictional documentary that was made by the CIA agents who faked the moon landing which that may be or may not be fiction, depending on where you land on that one. Um, so welcome, guys. Thanks, Thanks for joining for us today. Us. Hi. And, uh, well, for, first things first, do you, I mean, I'm assuming here you're making fun of the conspiracy theory that the moon landing wasn't actually Yeah, right, real. we don't believe in it. Yeah, in fact, that's the number one question we get asked all the time. Even when we were making the movie, people thought that we were making it because politically we were trying to make some point about the CIA faking the moon landing, but no. Like, to me, it seemed pretty obvious, and then I've seen some people who I feel like they didn't get it. A lot of the people who come to the screenings of this movie at film festivals there will normally be one or two hardcore conspiracy theory junkies who are often quite a bit older and believe even when we tell them to their face, no, 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 we think it's a joke, they think that somehow we're on the take or that we're speaking in code with them and that this movie is the truth and thank God we did it. Well, your film is very convincing. I guess so, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, I mean, also to, to put it into perspective too, the way that you guys do it is you play, you play yourselves. Uh-huh. Um, and you guys are all friends, and there's not really a script, right? You're kind of just like improvising uh, exactly. a lot of the yeah, time. Yeah. Talk us through how that actually works, how, how you effectively manage to work rather than just kind of have fun. And, and, and Well, because the, the, we're trying to make the movie seem like it really is a documentary. Like, our goal was to convince people that the moon landing was faked, uh, even though that seems insane. And so to do that, we had to play ourselves, and we had to shoot in all real places. So we shot in real NASA, we shot really in England where Stanley Kubrick shot 2001 A Space Odyssey and the reason we play ourselves is because like when we're setting these things up like when we told NASA hey we're coming to make a documentary about the Apollo program it's not like I could use a fake name because they were checking our passports and things mm -hmm. like that we're Canadians and so we had to play ourselves we didn't have a choice we should be very skeptical of Canadians it, well you know I, we would have done the same thing if we were Americans <laughs> yeah. uh, so do you feel I don't know ethically at all conflicted about the fact that you lied to NASA to, well, to get in? We would. I mean, I, I, I'm sure Miller and I feel differently about this, and everybody in our team sort of approaches that question from a different place. But for me, I would feel like I was ethically compromising myself if the intent was to make fun of these people. If we were making like a Sacha Baron Cohen film and that the point of this was to say, oh yeah, look at how stupid NASA mm -hmm. is, or look at how stupid the people we fooled are, which is not what the movie is about. I mean, we tricked them in as much as we needed to shoot at NASA's Galveston campus, not that we needed to make them look bad. But the Where film, do you stand on this? Well, I mean, I think the film celebrates NASA and, and the men and women who you know, took us to the moon in, in 1969. Um, so I, I, I actually do agree with, with Johnson uh, on that. Um, yeah, I, I mean, Johnson's character in the movie is very much an end justifies the means kind of guy, and I kind of feel in this instance, okay, so we lied about what we were doing there, but it, you know, we didn't have bad intentions. Have they responded since? No, we, tr we invited them to our screening at South by Southwest, and they didn't come, but uh, <laughs> NASA's also <laughs> a huge interested. institution. Yeah. So, but, but they're very, very strict about not supporting anything that has anything to do with the moon landing being faked, for good reason. But, uh, but yeah, I wonder if they'll see the humor in this. We definitely tried to get the details right. If you're out there, NASA... <laughs> we really did try to get everything completely and totally right. And we want to know what you think. Tell, tell us. Come yeah. see our movie. Yeah, come, come see Operation Avalanche. I think you'll really like it. Uh, I want to know what NASA thinks, too. We'll see if maybe one day someone will decide to go on the record, maybe not speaking for the organization, but as, as an individual who maybe worked for NASA. I mean, one of the other things, too, is I think we're all of the age... I'm assuming, unless you guys have aged incredibly well, that we weren't really alive in no, the heat not of the space race. Yeah. Uh, you know, how have, have older audiences responded to this, too? Because you also, you know, you put in some, some footage and some audio of Kennedy giving speeches that were these kind of rousing speeches about, uh, you know, what we can do and how, how many risks that this country can take and how it's never about stopping progress but mm -hmm. only pushing the boundaries and stuff that really is, you know, inspiring. We don't hear that anymore because nobody cares about space anymore. Yeah. Yeah. Older, yeah, a lot of older people have been like, oh wow, that really was like the world I grew up in. Um, because the movie's not in release yet, we've only been able to talk to people at film festivals. Uh, but we were shocked. We thought that the movie was like way too modern in terms of its sensibility and its sense of humor that, uh, that only younger people would get it. But a lot of people who are much older than us 
they're like, oh yeah, wow, you guys really show Nailed me, it. yeah, show me what the 1960s nostalgia like. is a really powerful thing, I think. And so, like when we premiered at Sundance, you know, a lot of the audiences there are skewed to the older side, and um, you know, would have been kids when this was all happening, and uh, we were floored at the response we, we got from those people, and, and I think. I hope they make up a big part of our audience now that the movie's coming out. Yeah, and I think that a lot of the the our generation when we were growing up, there would nobody talked about NASA. I mean, the, you you could talk about astronauts, and that was really cool. But NASA wasn't really thriving during the '90s, and so I think because that generation grew up with NASA as a part of their lives, like oh wow, these are what, that's where the heroes go to work, and they're doing such important mm-hmm. stuff. I think that left a lot of lingering feelings about that program and so now seeing this movie that really lionizes NASA in a lot of ways made them go oh yeah yeah I really like that because I mean otherwise a lot of those heroes just aren't talked about anymore yeah whatever happened to that well I, bet, I personally think it's it's too bad that that's not something that we really want to spend money on but now you have private industry stepping in exactly but, and it's going to change I think with the new Mars race and <coughs> with uh, I mean they just discovered like a, a, a a life-supporting planet quite close to here it was on Reddit a few days ago. Yeah, I think I think young people are getting more and more interested in NASA. Neil deGrasse Tyson is kind of a bit of a figurehead of that movement of why space exploration is important. So who knows? There could be a resurgence. But I know NASA is hurting for funding. Hurting. Do you just, uh, get all your news from Reddit. Uh, quite a bit. Yeah, yeah. Quite a bit. <laughs> just curious. We um, did some research for the movie on Reddit because uh, there's Reddit? some there's some good deep dives. Um, a lot about uh, conspiracy, into, conspiracy into the conspiracy sure. world. Tons. Well, so that's what I'm curious too, is because like those people, I mean, let's be honest, those people are passionate mm. and they are hardcore and they are intense, no matter what the conspiracy theory is. So, how you know have those interactions gone? They're definitely not coming off it. That's for sure. It's it's like I mean, we tried to fake the moon landing. I'm not trying to say that we're the authority on whether or not the moon landing could be faked, but <laughs> we did everything in our power to fake the moon landing in our movie. And we can tell you it's impossible. It's very hard. Even with the technology that you have now, it would be impossible to do what they needed to have done in the 1960s. Um, and even in explaining this kind of stuff with people who believe in the moon landing, that like you just get nowhere. They just they have this fundamental mistrust or distrust of the American government. And no matter what you say, they know that that was a gigantic lie. Which is so ridiculous because it's like, who cares? Let's say that was a lie. Let's say if you know breaking news tomorrow, the moon landing did not happen. I don't even think anybody would really care. I, I don't mean, think people would care. I don't sure, think people it, like for the, the sense of the story. Lying to them. <laughs> but it w- I don't think it would fundamentally change North America. Well, like, not now, but at the time, obviously, you know, when it comes to the space race. Well, oh, I guess so, but no, but I think it would War. because if they lied about that, what else did they lie about? Okay, yeah, maybe. Slippery maybe. slope. Uh, yeah, what? I guess. I guess what I'm saying is that the achievement of getting to the moon, it's not like that. Changed right what what America was you know or is are um, are there Canadian conspiracy theorists you know like are there people who distrust the Canadian government as fiercely as those who distrust the American government yeah maybe I mean those people live up north um, or out west or out west yeah I mean there's there's the same type of uh, uh, of like very like right wing movements that happen in uh, in the states in Canada but we don't have like, I don't As, know what the equivalent is to, like, the 9-11 conspiracies well, we don't or have, the moon landing. We don't have the same type of achievements, right? And so normally, normally <laughs> oh, conspiracy... Oh, the truth comes out. <laughs> but, but I think that's just reality. Like, I think, I think the moon landing conspiracy is associated with the moon landing triumph. Like, you had to land on the moon for there to be a conspiracy against it. Yeah. I mean, Canada, we made the Canadarm, which is attached huh. to the shuttle that they use to move things around. And that's not to say Canada doesn't do great things. It's just that the things that we do don't move. They're not seeped in, in the same kind, you know, like we invented insulin. Yeah, right. And there's no conspiracy there's no conspiracy. There. It's like, insulin's great. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe we'll make the great insulin it's conspiracy so, It's so film. straightforward. So you guys live in Toronto. Yeah. How are you feeling about the election that's going on here now? Because, I mean, obviously it's not so easy for a bunch of Americans to just cross the border, but you've had... A lot of people saying that if Donald Trump wins, you know, they're they're leaving the country. They said the Obviously same thing. Obviously, Canada is a is a prime target because it's north, it's easy. And yeah, it happened. I remember when Bush country. got reelected, you know, for his second term. The same thing happened, and there were stories about people coming up. Alec Baldwin said he was coming to live in Canada if Bush won. I remember that, but he didn't come. I know. <laughs> we would love to have him. <laughs> yeah, I think it's just a lot of rhetoric. I, I I don't. I think it's great for for our economy if a ton of Americans come. 
to live in Toronto, but I don't think uh, I don't think people are serious when they actually say that. All right, so and Trump really can't win the it. election. Like that's not going to happen. Well, I mean, don't say that. That's that's the thing is everyone keeps dismissing it, but you look at polls and it's a lot, it's a lot closer. Yeah. I don't, I don't, I don't understand, guys. Happy. What the hell? Like, come on. <laughs> you guys get Justin <laughs> Trudeau, and we have maybe a potentially a Donald Trump. Hey, yeah, maybe. I, I, I don't know. I'm not politically plugged in enough, I think, to have a, a reasonable part in that debate whatsoever. I, want, I, I, I thought they said that in the polls that Trump has stood absolutely no chance. It seems like this, the, the, the well, sand that, is shifting every day. Every poll comes with a grain of salt. The polls yeah. change every single day. Hillary Clinton obviously had a bad week with like the pneumonia and, uh, and then stuff like that. You know, So it's, it's constantly... Sadly, There's, it's oh, constantly you know what? Changing. That's actually a great topic of conversation, which is that it seems like Donald Trump, at least from a lot of things that I read, is very down with conspiracy theories. Loves, he's, a, he's a total uh, birther. Yeah, and he likes stoking the fires of conspiracy theorists, and just in sort of the vague language he uses, really like whips up. Just today we were talking about how it seems so anti-American to believe that the moon landing was faked, and that when we were making this movie, we were worried, oh man, people are going to think this is so anti-American, and Americans are going to hate this. But it almost seems like now, there's a shift where if Donald Trump were to say, you know, oh, in the moon landing, we don't even know what happened there, that might have been some type of, like, BS thing, then all of a sudden it would be seen as pro-Trump to believe that the moon landing was fake. Like, I, I wonder if that could So actually happen. you're releasing the film at the perfect time. <laughs> well, that's not lost on us, the it's, idea that it's... it's coinciding a, with, uh, with this moment in, uh, in American politics where a well, lot is being brought up. Well, Part mistrust. of the film is about the absurdity of sort of big government and the people who make our decisions for us. Um, and so, yeah, it's a good election uh, year movie, I think. I wonder what Trump would think of the movie. I think he'd fall asleep. They try to recreate the 60s. Can do nothing. Well, Sad. You Tell us how <laughs> you made it. Uh, and this is like when it gets over my head, I have to admit. But how you made it look like it was shot in the 60s. You know, and the, what, are, what are all the technical tricks that went into that? Well, there's a ton of different things that we did for different scenes, but in the end, it was about creating a 16 millimeter film negative of the entire movie, which means that we had to have like a really talented film artist convert absolutely everything that we shot onto a, like a strip of 16 millimeter negative film, and that took a long, long, long time. And then we did a lot of like crazy tricks with that film, like we dragged it around and buried it, and did all the things that you see our characters doing with that film, because that film is their evidence that the CIA faked the moon landing, so it had to feel like it had been manipulated and handled by those characters and uh, parts of it are missing, parts of it are cut out, like all that stuff was very intentional. So, and our cinematographers, Jared Rabb and Andy Appel, they did like a ton of research and we used mm -hmm. these old French ingenue lenses, so we tried to make it as accurate as possible. There's a lot of stock footage in the movie and we knew that to sort of seamlessly integrate it, our footage needed to look like that footage, so that sort of created the baseline for us. And then we just did months and months of tests to match to that. Yeah, but it was a lot of work, but it's, but it's, but it's very fun. It sounds, it sounds like, like a lot of work. It sounds complicated, but it looks, it looks legit. Let me uh, just read a couple comments and questions here. So Linda says, Alec Baldwin should go to Canada, <laughs> except we love Canada. <laughs> <laughs> oh wow! So that means she's an uh, Linda. Are you an Alec Baldwin hater? Uh, That's crazy. It sounds like maybe, yeah. Do yourself a favor if you're on the internet right away. Well, you must be. Look up Jiminy Glick interviews Alec Baldwin. This was like 2000, mid 2000s. One of the funniest interviews you will ever see I have in not your life. Seen this. Uh, it's insane. <laughs> okay. In insanely funny. It's gonna make you like Alec Baldwin if you're an Alec Baldwin. If you fan. don't, yeah. If you, there's no way you don't like Alec Baldwin after seeing this. He tells a story about sleeping with Sarah Jessica Parker. That is, just watch it. I won't ruin it. Okay, I might have to go watch it right after this interview. Uh, Jamie, who's sitting right over there. Hi, Jamie. He says, during your deep dive on Reddit, did you find a favorite conspiracy theory? Uh, well, it depends. Depends what you mean by favorite. Like the the most the ones that seem to have the most. One that convinced you, maybe. Oh, one that convinced maybe me. Maybe no. Make me a believer. Make me a believer. No, no way. No, nothing. I mean, the JFK. There's a lot of interesting stuff there, but the one the one that has like the most far-reaching, crazy consequences are like the 9/11 conspiracy, and like that has so many, so many people are weighing in on that conspiracy, which is just which is just crazy. Like that seems to be the one that has the most active community in terms of people trying to drum up facts about it. it. Yeah. But um but you know there's there's a lot of new ones like there's like that flat earth conspiracy has just come back out of nowhere. Wait, I don't even know that. 
people think that the world the is, really the is Earth flat. Is flat. Well, the same still. people think that the moon landing was fake. No, so no, that, no, so no, that no. the <laughs> photos of the Earth, you know, from the moon. Wait, how could you possibly think that the Earth is still flat? That's an interesting one. I know. Yeah, I, I have I'm no not, idea. I'm not familiar with that. Well, you look know, it like up. Chem I think, trail, Sasquatch, all that. I, think, I get, but I think Bob also was like supporting it, but it might be it might have been a joke. I don't know much about it, but yeah, there's some people who believe that the Earth is flat. But all that stuff, I think the reason that it survives is just because the stories are so good. It's so good to believe that 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 what we think is the truth is not the truth. That's just such a, that's just yeah. such an awesome feeling. Well, I don't so I don't blame people for being skeptical. You know, like we find out something every day that turns out though, oh, we've been fed lies for years or for decades. It's the, good to be skeptical. There, there was just that, that piece in the New York Times yesterday that was like, Oh, guess what? The sugar industry uh, you know, managed to manipulate all the science on this so that people thought that salt was the real culprit and so that you don't have sugar, uh, the amount of sugar um, out of your, your daily intake you're supposed to have on the back of a nutrition label the way that you do for sodium or for other things. Your fats, so, yeah. Yeah, so, or for fats, thank you, not sodium. But, you know, when you see stuff like that, like, it pisses you off because that's being peddled and, and taught and sold to people. And what's sad is that those are the conspiracies that really affect you. They have real yet, impacts on your health. And yet the ones that get all the attention are these sort of, like like the moon landing conspiracy. And this is what I was trying to say before. It's like if it turns out that that, like putting your energy into that conspiracy is not actually getting you anywhere. Whereas something like that really like, like the conspiracy that the tobacco industry was, you know, suppressing the health data about smoking. Like that is really crazy. And that's worth talking about. Whether or not we went to the moon I think is meaningless in comparison to those. I think we have one of your friends um, watching from Toronto. Andy Appel says, Matt, what's the login to your computer? Darby can't sign in. <laughs> yeah. uh, Andy, I'll, I'll, I'll say something Andy. really brutal on this. Is this being saved? Is this video going to be uh, saved? This is live and it's going to be on the internet forever and ever. Okay. Andy. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> no, I, I won't. You know what it is. It's cosmical. Well, don't tell everybody that. Well, when are they going to go to our office? That's very, very funny, Andy. Uh, all right, and then Mahasti Rittinger says, I've been waiting for this. When is it out? It comes out in New York and Los Angeles this Friday, so the 16th, and then next week we're expanding to a bunch of other American cities like San Francisco, Austin, and then the week after that we'll be open in Canada, finally on the 30th. Um, but check your local listings. You will find us Operation Avalanche. Awesome. So this moment's now here. What's next? You, you told me that you're filming a, a Pokemon themed episode for your new TV show. That's what, right. What else is going on? What else is you in the works? Yeah, we make a television show right now for Vice called Nirvana the Band the Show. We just had our world premiere at the Toronto Film Festival a few days ago. Um, Andy, Congratulations. Andy, Andy the guy Andy talking film. about it before, is one of our biggest fans. He's, a, he's, a, he's an assistant to <laughs> an assistant at our office. A really nice guy, smart guy, and he's really coming up and he's learning a lot. And. Um, and uh, yeah, anyway, the show follows these two musicians in Toronto who are just trying to become famous, but it uses all the same tricks that Operation Avalanche does, like shooting in the real world, and we play ourselves, um, but it's just comedy. And that's coming out in January on Viceland. So check that out. You guys will like that too. And I mean, hopefully by that point, Andy is, oh, and maybe Andy is Austin's boss. Can you imagine that? I don't know. <laughs> Forget that. Don't worry, Austin. You're safe, man. Yeah. Do you feel like Toronto is having a good uh, a, a moment? moment? Yes, yeah. they are. A hundred percent. The weekend. It, Who, who's done it? Actually, for Actually, it began with Rob Ford, and I know that sounds silly, but Rob Ford what? really paved the way for it because people all of a sudden started talking about Toronto, and then Drake and the Raptors. Actually, I think the Blue Jays. We're coming back. We're coming back, man. We're Toronto. Toronto's coming back. 2016, 2017, and then we'll be saying 2018. But we're gonna have our year. I think <laughs> Toronto is great. Personally, I think it's an awesome city, so Us I'm too. glad everyone else is uh, is realizing that. I know, it makes what New about... York look like a little speck. <laughs> <laughs> but I hear that Maple Leafs fans are, like, really nasty. It depends. Like, you know, like, really mean if their team isn't doing well. Well, that, well that's that what means they say they're about already mean. The no, 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 no. That's a man. That's a man. No, they're not mean. They're just, they're a tortured fan base, you know, like uh, like the Cubs or, yeah. you know, any tortured fan like base. Like most fan bases, um, sadly. But yeah. there's no hockey fans in our organization. No, so Andy, Andy is a big hockey fan. <laughs> you guys aren't real Canadians. Well, we, you know what? I know it's funny, but that's that's actually a myth. We know very few 
real hockey, hockey fans. fans. Tristan, I guess, would be the closest thing to a hockey yeah, fan. Yeah, Tristan. We have some baseball fans. I'm a big basketball fan. But right. more, more, more into Pokemon Go at the moment, as I heard you are. Me too. Yes. Yeah. I'm going to play as soon as we're done with this interview. So why don't we wrap it up, actually? <laughs> so I can get back to that. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. But Matt and Matt, thank you both so much for joining us. Thank you for having us. a pleasure, guys. And thank you. Play, you play yourselves. Uh-huh. Um, and you guys are all friends, and there's not really a script, right? You're kind of just like improvising uh, exactly. a lot of the yeah, time. Yeah. Talk us through how that actually works, how, how you effectively manage to work rather than just kind of have fun. And, and, and Well, because the, the, we're trying to make the movie seem like it really is a documentary. Like, our goal was to convince people that the moon landing was faked, uh, even though that seems insane. And so to do that, we had to play ourselves, and we had to shoot in all real places. So we shot in real NASA we shot really in England where Stanley Kubrick shot 2001 A Space Odyssey and the reason we play ourselves is because like when we're setting these things up like when we told NASA hey we're coming to make a documentary about the Apollo program it's not like I could use a fake name because they were checking our passports and things mm -hmm. like that we're Canadians and so we had to play ourselves we didn't have a choice we should be very skeptical of Canadians it, well you know I, we would have done the same thing if we were Americans yeah. <laughs> uh, so do you feel I don't know Ethically, at all, you conflicted about the fact that you lied to NASA to, well, to get in. We would. I mean, I, I, I'm sure Miller and I feel differently about this, and everybody in our team sort of approaches that. Joining me now, I have Matt Johnson and Matt Miller, who are both the creators of a new film called Operation Avalanche, which is, well, it is a film about a fictional documentary that was made by the CIA agents who faked the moon landing which that may be or may not be fiction, depending on where you land on that one. Um, so welcome, guys. Thanks, Thanks for joining for us today. Us. Hi. And, uh, well, for, first things first, do you, I mean, I'm assuming here you're making fun of the conspiracy theory that the moon landing wasn't actually Yeah, right, real. we don't believe in it. Yeah, in fact, that's the number one question we get asked all the time. Even when we were making the movie, people thought that we were making it because politically we were trying to make some point about the CIA faking the moon landing, but no. Like, to me, it seemed pretty obvious, and then I've seen some people who I feel like they didn't get it. <laughs> a lot of the people who come to the screenings of this movie at film festivals there no, will normally be one or two hardcore conspiracy theory junkies who are often quite a bit older and believe even when we tell them to their face, no, 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 we think it's a joke, they think that somehow we're on the take or that we're speaking in code with them and that this movie is the truth and thank God we did it. Well, your film is very convincing. I guess so, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, I mean, also to, to put it into perspective too, the way that you guys do it is you... We're in this. We definitely tried to get the details right. If you're out there, NASA... <laughs> we really did try to get everything completely and totally right. And we want to know what you think. Tell, tell us. Come yeah. see our movie. Yeah, come, come see Operation Avalanche. I think you'll really like it. Uh, I want to know what NASA thinks, too. We'll see if maybe one day someone will decide to go on the record, maybe not speaking for the organization, but as, as an individual, maybe work for NASA. I mean, one of the other things, too, is I think we're all of the age... I'm assuming, unless you guys have aged incredibly well, that we weren't really alive at no, the heat of the space close. race. Yeah. Uh, you know, how have, have older audiences responded to this, too? Because you also, you know, you put in some, some footage and some audio of Kennedy giving speeches that were these kind of rousing speeches about, uh, you know, what we can do and how, how many risks that this country can take and how it's never about stopping progress but only pushing the boundaries and stuff that really is you know, inspiring. We don't hear that anymore because nobody cares about space anymore. Yeah. Yeah. Older, yeah, a lot of older people have been like, oh wow, that really was like the world I grew up in. Um, because the movie's not in release yet, we've only been able to talk to people at film festivals. Uh, but we were shocked. We thought that the movie was questioned from a different place. But for me, I would feel like I was ethically compromising myself if the intent was to make fun of these people if we were making like a Sacha Baron Cohen film and that the point of this was to say oh yeah look at how stupid NASA mm -hmm. is or look at how stupid the people we fooled are which is not what the movie is about I mean we tricked them in as much as we needed to shoot at NASA's Galveston campus not that we needed to make them look bad but the where film, do you stand on this? well I mean I think the film celebrates NASA and, and the men and women who you know took us to the moon in, in 1969 um, so I, I, I actually do agree with, with Johnson uh, on that. Um, yeah, I, I mean, Johnson's character in the movie is very much an end justifies the means kind of guy, and I kind of feel in this instance, okay, so we lied about what we were doing there, but it, 
you know, we didn't have bad intentions. Have they responded since? No, we tr we invited them to our screening at South by Southwest, and they didn't come. But uh, <laughs> NASA is also <laughs> a huge institution, yeah. so but but they're very very strict about not supporting anything that has anything to do with the moon landing being faked, for good reason. But uh, but yeah, I wonder if they'll see the human like way too modern in terms of its sensibility and its sense of humor that. Uh, that only younger people would get it, but a lot of people who are much older than us are like, "Oh yeah, wow, you guys really show Nailed me, it. yeah, show me what the 1960s." Nostalgia is like. a really powerful thing, I think. And so, like when we premiered at Sundance, you know, a lot of the audiences there are skewed to the older side, and um, you know, would have been kids when this was all happening, and uh, we were floored at the response we, we got from those people. And, and I think, I hope they make up a big part of our audience now that the movie's coming out. Yeah, and I think that a lot of the, the our generation, when we were growing up, there would, nobody talked about NASA. I mean, the, you, you could talk about astronauts, and that was really cool, but NASA wasn't really thriving during the 90s. And so I think because that generation grew up with NASA as a part of their lives, like, oh, wow, these are, that's where the heroes go to work, and they're doing such important mm -hmm. stuff. I think that left a lot of lingering feelings about that program, and so now seeing this movie that really lionizes NASA in a lot of ways, made them go, oh yeah, yeah, I really like that. Because, I mean, otherwise, a lot of those heroes just aren't talked about anymore. Yeah, whatever happened to that? Well, I, I personally think...